Hi everyone, and welcome to a review of the Hornby Silver Link. <laughs> special review today. I am incredibly excited because this here is an engine I've wanted to get for the last three or four years and I've finally got it. This is the Hornby 80th Anniversary Limited Edition Silver Link A4, the first A4 ever built. So it's been a, over a, probably about nearly two years since I've bought a Hornby engine just because they haven't brought out any engines recently that I've wanted to buy. Um, and I've been wanting to get one of these A4s for a very long time. And you may have seen that they recently brought out a uh, four engine set for the first four silver A4s um, for the 80th anniversary of the Silver Jubilee. Um, but this was like 550 quid, so I thought I'd never get one. But thankfully, very kindly, my good friend Matt, who you've seen in the South Devon behind the scenes video, um, who he works somewhere where they have big model railway shops and they were splitting sets of these so he managed to pick me one of these up at a slightly discounted price um <laughs> and so here we are today so yes the silver they, these were built for the silver jubilee service and painted silver the first four engines it's a single chimney and it's just fantastic i'm well aware that there is a backman one but um the Hornby, I do find the Hornby A4s to be a bit better, that's just my opinion, they're just better detailed. Um, so yeah, limited edition of a thousand, didn't come with a certificate, but I think you have to buy the whole set to get a certificate, but I'm not bothered about that. Um, I did run it in yesterday, uh, so we'll just have a look at the back. So it's got a nice detailed drawing diagram, it says 2004 for it, so it's obviously the same, di same drawings, just with higher detail. So yes, it just says a bit about the rivalry between the LMS and the LNER in the 30s, and um, how Silver Link was built in 1935, 1946 she was renumbered, and then it was changed up to BR Management to 70014, and it was scrapped in January 1963. Yes, unfortunately she wasn't saved, but I believe that's because it was a lot difficult more difficult with eastern engines because unlike with western engines and southern engines where they all just went to Barry, you had to buy these engines out of BR, the eastern ones. Um, but it's just an engine I'm fascinated by. I love the silver livery and I just think it's really the genesis of the fastest steam locomotive in the world, which of course is Mallard, but this was the first edition. And it's very nice to have a si single chimney A4 as well, because a lot of the newer ones are uh, double chimney, but I can't imagine they were very easy to keep very clean. So huge thanks to Matt for buying it for me. Um, and yeah, I'm just super excited. It's such a fantastic model. Um, and that I was able to get one because they had done a couple. There was one, I believe, in the 80s with a train set, and there's a Wren one, and they're obviously not going to be very good. Um, and then there was one they did uh, a couple of years ago, I think, for the 75th anniversary of Mallard's record. But I, they were, I think they were only available from the NRM, um, and on eBay they regularly go for 200 to 250, and there's no way I'm paying for that one. It's basically the same as this. So, um, very excited to have it. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's open her up. So the new new for Hornby, obviously standard for Backman um, ice cube packaging. Don't actually have a Hornby model with this. We'll just have a quick look. The instructions: normal class A4, DCC ready, DCC fitted to the sound, obviously DCC ready. Normal diagram of to take everything apart. Ah, yeah. That's quite handy, you can remove the coal load, so I will be doing that and fitting real coal, as usual. So we'll put that over there. Just Yes, I'm trying this on the uh, part where I store all my scenic parts, I thought that was better, plus the light over here is a bit better as well, so hopefully it should come out a little easier on the film. So we've got 
flanged bogey if you're going to run it over really wide bits. And the cylinder drain cocks. I would put those on, but due to the tight nature of my layout, it's just going to make it derail all the time and they'll just break. Now, one very unfortunate, annoying thing, which you'll be able to see down there. Yes, the dreaded wire permanent tender connection. I know, disaster. I'm really annoyed at all of the manufacturers. No one likes it at all because it's just a pain in the ass. And, um, but we'll get her open anyway. <sighs> Good thing that Matt pointed out to me was that a lot of people will probably just be leaving me sat on their shelves in collectors places, but oh boy, is that not happening to this one. <laughs> just bear with me for a second while I just put the packaging away. But yes, I'm quite glad I didn't end up saving up for ages and buying the full set, because that would have been quite expensive, and one silver A4 I think is enough. So, where do we begin then? Well, first thing that strikes you is how good the lining on the tender is. It's the silvery blue, and it looks fantastic. And then if we move on down the locomotive, we have the builder's plate there, and the silver link on the side, the single chimney and the chime whistle, and I believe that's something to do with the lubrication or something. Um, not sure. Not an expert on these things. Um, obviously, it'd be very difficult to rename or something because you'd have to respray the whole engine and get a very specific transfer. So, obviously, I had to get a ready-made model because I'm not that brave. <laughs> but it looks absolutely superb. You've got cab doors there and a tender corridor connection with, um, with a very nice... Well, you'll see that in a minute. Um, corridor connection. The white wheels look superb. Just overall, they have really pulled this one out of the bag. It looks fantastic. One thing that does strike me is it's a lot lighter than my older Mallard, which I was very surprised at. But I'll probably end up putting some weights in it and things. So, if we just have a closer look in here... see that there is quite a lot of detail in here or on the tender for the coal scoop the handbrake water scoop and the corridor connection there you actually get the barrel of the top that runs along and over here we have quite a lot of cab detail you can't see it from here but the the reverser is actually white i'm not sure whether that was an original feature and the bucket seats cab detail is up to hornby's normal standards Brake and regulator are all in there, as you can see. Ejectors, injectors, superb. Not very 3D. My castle is a little better because it's 3D, but then the tooling is a bit older for this. But it is just, just superb. I just, I, 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 I can barely fault it really, to be honest. It's, it's almost breathtaking. Oh, it'd be handy if I zoomed out really. Superb. Lovely cut loop detail on the front with the usual sprung buffers. Yes, so the Su Silver Jubilee service was named to commemorate the Silver Jubilee of King George V, and so everything was given a silver theme. I believe the engine, the, f the first engine, was named after a line in a poem. Um, and the coaches are a very interesting feature because they were articulated. Um, now, I can't really get hold of these coaches at the moment. There are some Hornby ones which are okay, but to be honest, they look like LMS coaches. And there are some ones made by Ace Trains, I believe, but they stopped making those a long time ago, and they go for extortionate prices on the internet. So, so um, but I'm sure it will look reasonable with teaks, really. Um, but most things in modelling tend to be a bit like that. You can never quite get what you want a lot of the time. But I'm not really sure there's anything more to say about the locomotive, unless you want to... Oh yes, I meant to point out the top. Safe, lovely safety valve detail. 
and some very nice air vents. I believe those were different on my mallard as well, which are movable. Um, and around the back we got the ooh, got the tender corridor connection detail, and the footsteps leading up to the top. So that's all well and good. Linkage is as you would expect from Hornby. So. I mean, a lot of people would think you were pretty daft painting an en a steam engine white. And I should imagine that they were. But anyway, a little more on the Silver Jubilee service, um, which I forgot. It was interrupted, it started in 1935, and it was interrupted by the outbreak of war, unfortunately. Um, and it never continued, but Silver Link herself was actually, at the time she was built, she was the fastest engine in the world. She cracked on one of her first runs 112 and a half miles an hour. No, just 112, but it sold Fox did 112 and a half, I think. 112 miles an hour. So, and that's quite, you know, they did some serious modifications to get up to 126. But, um, of course, this is single chimney. The cylinders are probably a bit smaller. The boiler pressure might be a bit lower. You never know. They're probably quite a bit different. But it's just a great shame that none of the original four ever survived, really. But we, we do have a great crop of A4s in preservation. But um, I suppose without further ado, i better put her on the track. So as I said earlier, this can be a little bit of a faff, as the locomotive is permanently coupled to its tender. Should be able to do this without too much of a problem. Oh yeah, that's another thing I didn't mention. It does have a speedo detail on this side, which I believe you don't get with the Backman A4s. That's a nice extra detail. So there we are. Completely inauthentic for my for mo a lot of layouts unless it's post um, pre-war period. But that's why my layout is as it is, so that you can have most regions on here, really. So I'll just go and uh, set the camera up in a different location so you can see her speed by. Right, so here we are. So obviously because I've got the HM2000 and it does the click, it does that sometimes when you turn it on. Um, but I can assure you it's very smooth once you smoothly apply power. Seems to be geared to running a little slower in reverse, which is realistic, but I ran her in yesterday. So up to Hornby's usual standards, I think it's a five pole motor. So we'll get some shots of her running around the layout now. Now this is the part of the video where I usually hitch it up some coaches, um, but I'm afraid my teaks are packed away at the moment, so since it's a luxury train, I think I'll just stick a couple of Pullmans on the back. So, do that, be back in a sec. Right, Pullmans attached. First time I've actually run it with a load, but it's only two. Oh well.
so that was a review of the Hornby Silverlink. I hope you all enjoyed. That's an engine that I've been trying to get my hands on forever, and I finally got it. So I'm in the process of getting another LNEI engine currently. Um, so I will do a review on that, and then possibly an LNEI running session. Um, but it won't be able to be on my layout, probably be on my layout at Ron's house. Um, so thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next review. <laughs>